Now that we know some of the many possible applications of machine learning in real-world use cases, we want to look further behind the curtains. How does machine learning work? How do I get from an idea to the final model that does what I want it to do? To answer those questions, however, we first have to start at the very beginning. What do I need for machine learning? And with this question, we do not refer to the more obvious requirements such as a computer. In our brief recap of the history of machine learning, we mentioned the rise of expert system. The name suggests it already, but we haven't mentioned it in much detail. Those systems are built for a specific domain, such as medical diagnosis, which usually requires a lot of expertise. To model them, the responsible engineer has to program rules, similar to an if-then-else rule, that capture necessary domain knowledge. As the engineer cannot be an expert in many different fields, they need to consult domain experts. In the case of medical diagnosis, for example, they would need doctors. However, domain experts are people with a highly specialized skill set and therefore are very expensive. So why are we talking about expert systems if we want to know more about how machine learning works? Similar to expert systems, we want to build a model that is capable of performing certain tasks in a given domain. To stay with, to say with our example, making a diagnosis based on the symptoms of a patient. But as we have already learned, machine learning tries to find a pattern within a given amount of data points in order to learn from that. And with this, we now have the answer to our question, what do I need for machine learning, which is data. Machine learning is trying to find patterns in a set of data points, or observations. As you can imagine, the more data points we have at our disposal, the more complex patterns we might be able to identify. We refer to this collection of data points as dataset. A single dataset contains many, many different data points. The data points themselves can be represented in many different forms, but for now we will assume the data set to be a simple table. This means that we have a set of different attributes that describe each data point in more detail. Let's look at an example. Our task is to decide whether we should go play tennis or not based on a set of different available information. And to be more specific, we know, what, we know the weather outlook, the temperature, humidity, and also the wind force. As mentioned earlier, we also have a set of observations from when we were playing tennis with friends. This collection of observations is our dataset. Let's take a closer look of what is inside this dataset. We see a number of different events that happened in the past, which you can see on the far left. This number, however, just indicates the row index. This means those values are not part of the actual dataset. Then we can see the four different types of information we mentioned earlier. Outlook, temperature, humidity, and wind. Additionally, as we want to tell whether we should go play tennis or not, we also labeled our events accordingly. Let's take row 8 as an example. Here we were playing on a sunny day with rather cool temperature and normal humidity level. Also, luckily for us, the wind force was weak. Therefore, it was an overall nice experience to play tennis, and thus we labeled, this as, we labeled it as yes for the column play. As you can see in this example as well, the more data points we have available, the more insight we can get for future decisions. Also, we have to collect the data ourselves, and in this case, even annotate the labels for our column play accordingly, it gives a rough idea of how much effort is behind creating a dataset. In our example, we only have a very tiny dataset with 13 different data points. However, many standard datasets that are used for current research practices contain thousands of unique observations. In the case of big data applications, companies even collect millions and tens of millions of data points. This means that one person might not be enough to label our data um, in, any in any reasonable amount of time. Additionally, datasets for special use cases, such as medical images, often require highly skilled experts to annotate the data, which then, which then again costs even more. As an example of how much labeling might cost, we look at Google's service. For a simple image labeling task, it will cost you $35 to annotate 1000 pictures. However, if you want to label different objects and segments of the picture, for example, what is a passenger, what is a car, where is the road, 
they ask for $870 per 1000 pictures. As you can see, the pricing can become very expensive very quickly, based on your use case. But besides the fact of pricing, it is also not always easy to collect all the data that you wish for. Let's take an online store as an example, where the company collects data about the customers and orders. Some customers might not fill in every information, as it might not be required, or maybe they put a wrong age or other wrong information into the form. At some point, the company might even change the system and the type of information they ask for. All of this leads to multiple issues when it comes to data quality, that is complete and correct data. Especially for you, the machine learning practitioner, using the dataset, it might be very difficult to judge whether the data is whether the data set is correct. And thus you need to be able to trust the publishers, which adds an additional complexity to the problem. However, there are plenty of standard datasets, also called benchmark datasets, for different applications and use cases. For example, the Wisconsin breast cancer dataset is a dataset with a very simple classification task. Determine whether the observation represents a benign or a malignant tumor. For a person without a medical background, it is probably very difficult to verify its correctness. Additionally, it also contains plenty of missing val values. But we also know that data is one of the most important ingredients for machine learning. Due to this, and the difficulty of creating one, standard datasets created by experts of the respective domains are very, very valuable. Fortunately, many of them are even publicly available and free to use for any machine learning practitioner. We can conclude that data is a very significant importance in the domain of machine learning. Unfortunately though, for many use cases, we are very dependent on publicly available datasets as it is very difficult and expensive to create complete and correct data ourselves.